We're going to do a review of the Telestrations 12-player party pack from the UP, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy of this game to check out. So the Telestrations 12-player party pack was published by the UP in 2011 as a re-implementation of their highly popular party game Telestrations, originally published two years earlier in 2009. Now, this new version of Telestrations has a player count of 4 to 12 players, includes 600 new words, and features a very reasonable price of $39.99. And as a party game, the higher player count built into the game is highly sought after. Now, Telestrations features the subtitle, The Telephone Game Sketched Out, and that's a pretty apt description. This is a formalized game version of Eat Poop You Cat or the telephone game where players get a clue, attempt to draw that clue, then pass their books to the next player who has to guess what was drawn. This is then passed to the next player who draws an image based on the last player's guess, alternating between drawing and guessing until the book gets back to the original player. While the game does include two different scoring systems, this party game is much more about the fun and laughs than figuring out who won. One of the things that did change a bit in this new edition of Telestrations is the component quality. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you check out the Telestrations 12 player party pack unboxing video on YouTube. So the thing, first thing you will notice with this 12 player version of Telestrations is of course the fact there's 12 books and each book has 12 pages. The next thing that I noticed though is that this version features fine point markers which I think are a big improvement over the fat markers included in the original game. Now, along with this, you get very clear and easy to learn from instructions, some cloth erasers, a pack of clues that actually matches the original game. They're identical. And then a separate pack, sealed pack of new clue cards and a card holder that thankfully fits both of these decks. There's also a custom six-sided die for determining which clues you should be using and a sand timer. The fine point pens make a big difference, even if you're not much of an artist, as you just get a bit more flexibility in your design, be it a stick man or a shaded piece of artwork. Now, for those not familiar with illustrations, how about you quickly go over how you play? So each player takes a book, a marker, an eraser, and one card. Everyone writes their name in the front of the book. Players then, as a group, decide if they want to use this side or that side of the cards and someone rolls the die. This indicates what everyone's clue is for the round. Everyone writes this down on the front of their book and then flips to the first blank page. What happens next depends on the player count. With an even number of players, you start drawing the clue you just wrote down, but with an odd number of players, you pass the book first and then start drawing the clue on the previous page. So as you always want to ensure that when it comes around, you're getting it at the right point. Correct. Now, the drawing rules are simple. You have one minute until the timer runs out to draw what you can. Don't use any letters or numbers. That's it. Once done drawing, you're going to flip to the next page of your book and pass it to the next player. Now, everyone has to guess what the drawings represent. Once everyone runs down their guess, they flip to the next page and pass the book. Players then look back, read the last guess, try to draw that, and so on. And you keep going back and forth until everyone gets their own book back. Then, one by one, players hold up their books and play Vanna White and show everyone the progression from page one to the page of the player count, which should result in lots of laughter. So, you get the clue, the draw, guess, draw, guess, and the first player should end up with a guess at the end to compare with the original clue. Yes, and that's why you have the different timing for odd or even number players, so that the last one is always a guess. Now, Telestration includes two different scoring systems. There's the friendly scoring and the competitive scoring, though competitive and telestrations to me is a little silly. Now, the friendly scoring is based on players picking their favorite sketches, their favorite guests, and getting a bonus point if the book came back and the last clue matches the original clue. The competitive scoring awards points for guesses that match the original clue or the last guess, sketches that help a guesser make a guess, and again, if the last guess gets matches the original clue, you get a bonus point. You'll recognize some of these similar scoring systems if you played any of the digital Jackbox drawing games. All right, now that everyone knows how to play, let's move on to our thoughts about this game. So I have been a fan of Telestrations for a long time, and I have owned the original eight-player version for many years now. 
In that time, I've also gotten to play with other people's copy of the 12-player version of the game, and I have had it on my list to pick up at some point, but never did so. So I do have to thank the op for finally giving me an opportunity to basically upgrade from the 8-player to the 12-player version of Telestrations. I honestly can say that I have never laughed playing any board game, any game as hard as I have playing Telestrations. This is a fantastic party game that I have enjoyed playing with gamers of all ages from young kids to seniors. Now, one of the best things about this game is how much fun it can be when things go wrong and, well, how awesome it can feel when you get your book back and that final guess actually matches your clue. Due to the fact the game is just as much fun when it goes right as when it goes wrong means this is great for players of all levels of artistic skill. Now, another thing that makes this game fun, even for people who can't draw, is due to that one minute time limit, even people who are fantastic artists generally don't have enough time to draw well and pull upon all their skills. In many games, a simple stick figure will be more effective at getting the message across than a complex drawing. It's much more about conveying simple gross concept mm -hmm. than fine little details. In some ways, too much artistry can hurt as the player has too much to think about when guessing what you might have meant. Now, another aspect that I like about Telestrations is that players don't actually really have to know what the clues mean in order to draw them. This is what makes the game approachable for younger kids and makes it more approachable in general than you would think. Note on the other end of the spectrum, not talking about kid-friendly, is this game can often go blue when playing with adults. For people that are really into a more adult game, you even have a Telestrations After Dark edition of the game, but that's not what we're talking about here. And to be fair, most adults who choose to don't need a After Dark version True. to make things a little risque anyways. Even the most innocent of clues can be shifted naughty should you choose. All right, so we love the system in Telestrations. Now, what sets this 12 ver player version apart from the original, aside from player count? Well, yeah, that's the most obvious, right? It plays 12 players instead of eight. Every book has 12 pages long, so there's 12 books, so 12 people can play simultaneously with one box. Next up are the thinner markers we already mentioned. Like, I gotta admit, there is some appeal to the fat-headed markers because it, again, helped to balance the skilled artists versus the doodlers, but everyone I've actually asked says, no, 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 the thinner ones are better. And actually, I know a lot of people who took the original version and just upgraded them with thinner markers bought elsewhere. Now, I also appreciate the fact 600 new clues. That is not a small amount. That's 50 new cards. I played Telestrations enough times that I think I've seen all the original cards and many of them multiple times. So it's nice to have some surprises shown up, shown up especially when playing with people who played the game as often as I have. You're never going to go wrong with adding more clue variety into guessing games, especially now when you're using 12 clues per game. And technically a full game is three rounds. So you're looking at 36 clues per game right. with, a, with a max player count. The only parts of Telestrations I admit that I don't love are is the one minute time limit and the scoring rules. But both of these are honestly extremely easy to fix. As for us, especially when playing with the kids or other people's kids, younger players, we find the one minute time limit a little too short. So what I do is I steal the timer rule from Race for the Galaxy for our game nights where everyone starts drawing and only when one player is finished do they start the timer for the rest of the players. With intermediate players, we do it even more so where at any point someone can start the timer, but it doesn't start until one of the players chooses to get it counting. This is one of those harmless house rules and can easily be changed in a variety of ways, depending on the group you're with. After all, most of us carry a digital timer with us everywhere we go nowadays to customize the timer. Now, as for scoring, we found the friendly scoring to be much more fun. And I've only used the competitive scoring a couple of times, mainly just to try it out, or when we happen to have that one player who needs to know who won. Most games, though, we skip both. We use the time that would be spent flipping back through the books and giving out points to play another round. Like many party games, the points here are rather arbitrary, arbitrary, they're rather arbitrary and really don't matter. The goal of the game is to have fun, and if you do that, you win. Score it like whose line is it anyways. Throw some points around and the winners are everyone who had fun playing. Fully agree. 
Overall, I've loved Telestration since I first played it many years ago, and that has not changed. This is not a game I got tired of. This is a game we continue to play, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. As for the 12-player party pack, it's an overall improvement on the original game, featuring higher player count, better components, and more clues. You really can't go wrong. If you're looking to pick up Telestrations for the first time, just go right out, grab the 12-player party pack. Even if your group isn't that big, if you don't even know, think you'll ever play with tall players, even if you just have four people going to play Telestrations, I still recommend you pick this one up for the additional clues and the better components. Plus, you never know when some extra guests might show up and you need a larger group game. For people who own the original, do you think it's worth upgrading? Honestly, that's a tough call. Uh, I own both now. I have both copies of the game. Um, I, I honestly think you should pick up the party pack and then donate your original copy to a less fortunate gamer, a library, a school, or make it someone's lucky value village find in the future where they can share that they got this great game for three bucks. Give it to someone else who will share some love. I don't think keeping both copies makes more sense. It's not like, well, I only have eight players today, so I'm going to use the old version. doesn't make sense to me, but I think it's worth picking up the new one. Like, that's just the one you should have. There really is no drawback to having the 12-player set, even if you aren't mm -hmm. sure you'll ever have that many players. Now, as for people who are just learning about this game for the first time, I don't know where you've been, but I strongly think it's worth checking out. I'm not a big party game fan. I, I'm like a medium to heavy Euro fan, and I... My, my collection of party games is pretty small and they don't come out all the time, but they come out a couple times a year for specific game nights. And Telestrations has been one of those games that I don't expect will ever leave that part of my collection. Well, that's it for our review of Telestrations 12 player party pack. Have you played Telestrations? We would love to hear what you think about this game in the comments. When you have the time, I also invite you to check out the written review over at Tabletop Bellhop. Dot com. Now, speaking of checking out tabletopbellhop.com for more Telestrations content, I invite you to check out our reviews of the new Telestrations 80s and 90s expansion pack featuring 50 new cards, featuring 600 new words and phrases, and our review of Telestrations Upside Drawn, a funky team-based version of Telestrations. 